In this episode of Mind Pump, we answer fitness and health questions. We actually answer four of them. But the first half of this episode is our introductory conversation where we catch up with each other, what happened over the weekend or the previous week. Big things for you, Sal. We talk about uh, our sponsors. We mention studies, typically that revolve around fitness and health, but sometimes revolve around other topics we're interested in. Oh, by the way, before this episode begins, we are having a massive Valentine's Day apparel sale. Starts the 7th of February, ends on the 14th of February. All men's and women's shirts are a full 25% off. Oh, yeah. All right, so here's what we talked about in this episode of Mind Pump. We start out by mentioning my wedding. That's right, I got married again. Uh, very, very happy, very good times. I had a very busy week, yeah. uh, so we talked about that for a second. Adam brought up how he's going to start selling Magic Spoon cereal uh, on the secondary market, apparently. <laughs> Brilliant idea, Adam. Uh, their blueberry uh, flavor has been out for a little while. Um, it tastes amazing, but they have other flavors like chocolate, uh, fruit loop type flavor. They have cinnamon, cinnamon, cinnamon uh, sugar flavors. They have frosted sure. flavors. Anyway, Magic Spoon is a cereal. It's like a kid's cereal, but for fitness fanatics. Mm. Okay, so here's why it's like a kid's cereal because it tastes like kid's cereal. Yeah, it's here's delicious. Here's why it's for fitness fanatics. It's high protein, amazing macros. No joke. A a normal bowl of this cereal will give you something like thirty grams of high quality whey protein. And again, it tastes like you're a kid. It's amazing. We have a hookup. It doesn't taste like kids. For you. Yeah. Uh, here's how you get the Mind Pump discount. Go to magicspoon.com forward slash Mind Pump and you'll get free shipping and a 100% happiness guarantee. By the way, if you go to magicspoon.com forward slash Mind Pump, you get an automatic discount applied. It's only for our audience. Then we talked about Justin's birthday and aging. He <laughs> turned 40. Doesn't look a day over 50. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about that going for me. <laughs> getting workouts in at home with kids. Uh, Adam's finding it difficult to be consistent going to the gym because he's got a little baby. We talked about how having a home gym makes that a lot easier. Justin, for example, has an at-home gym by PRX. PRX has the best fitness equipment you'll find for at-home gyms. They have these uh, squat racks that fold into the wall. No joke. They're very stable. They fold right into the wall. There's an adjustable bench. Uh, they have barbells, dumbbells, all kinds of other equipment for some of the best at-home equipment you'll find anywhere. And of course, we have a mind pump discount with PRX. Uh, here it is. If you go to PRX performance.com. So that's the letter P, the letter, the letter R, the letter X, performance.com forward slash mind pump and use the promo code mind pump. You'll get 5% off and a free maps prime program. Go check them out. Then Justin brought up a cool fact about chimps. Yeah. Fun fact. He's getting into the cool science stuff. Yeah. I talked about Neil deGrasse Tyson. He made a statement about uh, Americans and our science and technology knowledge. That was totally wrong. You're wrong, bro. I talked about a study on how low-fat diets may cause low testosterone in men. And then we gave a shout-out to one of our listeners, Brett Edelman. He hit two PRs, squats and deadlifts, from following MAPS Powerlift. This is our powerlifting program you can Damn. find at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Then we got into the fitness questions. Here's what we answered. The first question, can you build your physique specifically your legs with just free weights. We talk all about free weights and why... Yeah, that's Is kinda, that possible? That's kind of all you need. Nothing wrong with machines, but boy, free weights, they do everything beautiful for so you. So much better. Next question, this person says, look, I'm not that sore a day or two after my workouts. What does that mean? Does that mean I'm not working hard enough? Um, no, it means you're, you're, you're doing a good job, and we explain why. The next question, this person says, is it okay to skip trigger sessions if you're feeling sore or tired from a previous workout, trigger sessions are a specific type of workout found only in MAPS Anabolic. Mm -hmm. They're very light, low-intensity sessions designed to get your body to improve faster. Make sure you listen to that part of the episode. We kind of break down what they are and, and why they're good uh, for your body when you're sore. Mm -hmm. And the final question, this person says, look, there's benefits to switching up your workout routines what about your diet? Should I switch up my diet? Are there any benefits to this? So we talk all about that in that part of the episode. Also, this month, all month long, MAPS Split 
is 50% off. Now, Map we split, split it in half, Sal. is a body part split, bodybuilding and physique and bikini competitor inspired workout program. So this is a great workout if your goals are to shape, sculpt, and build your body. So if you go to the gym specifically to change how your body looks, if you want to shape and build muscle, if you want to be able to target specific muscles, this is a phenomenal program. When you enroll in Map Split, you get the full workout sent to you, but you also have a place where you can access the exercises, video exercise demos, blueprints, basically everything you need to follow the program and do the exercises the right way. All right, so here's how you get your 50% off discount. Go to mapssplit.com, that's M-A-P-S-S-P-L-I-T.com, and use the code SPLIT50. That's S-P-L-I-T-5-0, no space, for the discount. And it's t-shirt time. Ah, oh, shit, Doug, you know it's my favorite time of the week. We have three big winners this week. Two for iTunes, one for Facebook. The winners for iTunes are Julia Lia Lia, Leonam5, and for Facebook, we have Alexander Ebeler. La 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 la. <laughs> well, Elsa, <laughs> Good job, Justin. <laughs> All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Include your shirt size, your shipping address, and we'll get that shirt right out and to you. If you didn't hear your name, you're all losers. Everybody yeah. else is yeah. losers. Losers. <laughs> la 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 I am exhausted. You know how after a weekend mm. you're supposed to feel uh, relaxed? Charged. Yep, not this guy. No. I From had a wedding time or what? Action packed honeymoon weekend. Wow. Full of honeymoon in. Yeah. Getting action, doing action. No, no, no. I got I got my birthday, then got married. I'll tell you guys about that. Then it was uh Jessica's birthday, then my daughter father daughter dance, then my son had a robot all a robotics tournament all in a row. Yeah, tell the audience how you wow. didn't even in, um, invite uh, Justin Sal yeah. or Justin Doug. We, we told I, them about the base camp announcement. I mean, this kind of said it all. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. it Let was know. so. It was uh, just so you guys know. You guys will be in my wedding. I want you guys. To <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Uh, yeah, just so you guys know, you guys are invited to be in my yeah, wedding. No. So we like, didn't invite anybody. Not even my yeah, parents. We'll all be wearing Jordans. Nobody came. <laughs> just my kids. It was just my kids. Jessica and I. We went up to San Francisco City Hall. Which, by the way, have you guys been there? San Francisco, San Francisco City Hall? City no, Hall? Uh-uh. It's gorgeous. Why they're not San Jose? I know. Because San Jose City San Jose. Hall looks like crap. It does. The, the, the San Francisco City Hall is extremely- That's where I got married. It's picturesque. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> did you really? <laughs> I did. Oh, San Jose? <laughs> that was like the sneaky. I told you guys this story, Oh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways. But that's different, though, because okay. you had a wedding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had a wedding after that. There was That was the, hey, let's get a, you know. Let's do the quick and dirty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. What was your uh, remind me again? The, was it because of parents and living together? And that well, loophole with the old insurance thing. And oh, okay. The, that's uh, what I was. Okay. Surgery and yeah. yeah. That's how. Oh. That's how. Justin, Allegedly, that's how Justin's able to live here. That's in when the you, States, That's when the speed otherwise... stacks gave you the ulcer, right? Yeah, man. <laughs> yes. No, it was a tumor. Oh, you yeah, should remember tumor. that, Adam. Yeah. Your, <laughs> your recommendation gave him. Yeah. Well, well, I got number one in the company though was, a few times. Right. So. Had it been worth it? Yeah. Worth the trade. It was. No, San Francisco City Hall, gorgeous. We, so we go up there with the kids and, you know, did the whole wedding dress and we all dressed up for it and just had, it was such a special, it's so crazy because, you know, when you do your vows and the guy, you know, the, the whoever, the guy getting you married or oh, whatever. Oh, you guys exchange vows even, huh? No, just the ones that the guy tells you oh, to okay. say or Not whatever. Oh, like break your own. No, no, no. And, but, you know, this is my second time getting married and it's so, it's such a, such a crazy difference because the first time. It was like, oh, this is what we have to do. This time, there was like real meaning behind what I was doing. I mean, we were looking at each other, and I this I'd never experienced this before. Everything else disappeared, and we were just it was just her and I. And it's like you know we said our promises and our vows, and it was just it was so incredible, romantic. Yeah. It was very. Did you have a little so, like pool just filling up? A little bit, a little side, a little bit for real. So yeah, you did no, cry. Yeah. I swear to God, I was. Close. I came close to mine. I can't talk too much. Shit. Did you really? Yeah, I came close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> stuffed it back. <laughs> <in>. Justin, <laughs> Justin <laughs> repressed the shit out of that. <laughs> only, I've only seen feeling. Justin cry one time, and it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At least he didn't that cry. That was awkward. It was. It was. He wasn't sober. I was not. <laughs> That's it was, the reason. It was a floodgate. When did we cry? When did you cry? I don't. 
you never, well, I wasn't there. Was it's a there? secret yeah, no, story. Is, exactly. Was I there? Sal, why are you bring this up? Man? Was, <laughs> was I there? Impenetrable. Otherwise, I don't, I don't remember that. Oh, you were somewhere else. It's nothing. It it's was a fine. touching moment just between Justin and I. What? Yeah. Nobody else was there. We, we shared something. I yeah. missed you crying. Yeah. yeah, we hugged and everything. Yeah, man. Yeah, you weren't a part of the conversation. Don't worry. He yeah. almost cried when he got really high that one time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he would, he was That's this, what it takes, though. He was this close, dude. Got, got, that's yeah. literally what it takes to get it out of me. He was so mad he was going to cry. Yeah, I was. I, was, <laughs> I, 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 I get Stop angry making about fun that. Of me. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, uh, but dude, sensitive. you know what was what was amazing about this was uh, my were my kids. They were so excited, and my daughter was acting. You know when the you know the 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 what is it the maid of honor? Yeah, like walks around, adjusts the dress for the pictures, and like kind of holds this and takes care of that. My daughter totally did all that. She like stepped up and was super excited. That's it, awesome. It was so. And then we had dinner at um, Epic Steakhouse. You guys remember there in San Francisco? Mm-mm. No. So good. Oh, the steaks there were incredible. Steak, lobster, did you stay bone the night? marrow. Stay at the night? Stay no, the night no, there? no. We came like, back. Like you the Fairmont? Oh, okay. No, no. We came back that night. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. So did that, um, which and, was amazing. And, and then for your honeymoon, you did a robotics tournament? No. Honeymoon's coming up. <laughs> that that so, makes sense. Yeah. That's yeah a, I don't know why. <laughs> we're not that nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it's turning me on. Yeah. No, we did uh, the day after was my was the father daughter dance that I do every year um, with my daughter, which was just a complete blast. Dancing all night with my little girl, mm-hmm. just she was hugging me, telling me how much she loves me. It's such a great, great. Time. Now we've been together for five years, so this is the the fourth time out of five we've seen you do this. Yeah, so I've yeah. gone uh, every year since she started uh, preschool, except for one year when I fucked up. Remember that? Yeah, remember that year? You had to buy yeah, Disneyland. Remember that? Yeah, buy Disneyland. I, I I booked a vacation, didn't realize it was on the same date, and uh, took her to Disneyland for a couple of days to make up for it. <laughs> uh, but no, that was good. And then yeah, the robotics tournament was, uh, dude. Robotics tournaments at this level are crazy. Yeah, these kids are building. Machines, insane machines from scratch, doing complex tasks. Doing, yeah. The, the competition was, and I don't know all the rules, but they had to stack blocks mm-hmm. uh, for speed, and then they could interfere yeah, I was with each ask other. Ask you about that? Oh, they could interfere. They can. Uh, There's and, like and designated looked, areas you can't, but if they're outside of that, you could fucking block them and do weird shit. It yeah, really it cool. looked it looked like they had different colored blocks. I didn't know if that played into it in terms of stacking your color versus somebody else's. Yes, or, there were. I don't 100 percent get the rules, but if but you can get two points per block if they're all the same color. If something else happens or mm-hmm. whatever, so they're doing that, and you know I'm surrounded by all these like you know tech robotics kids, mm-hmm. and it's just I'm looking at them all and I'm watching them, thinking to myself like I wonder how many these guys are going to be. You know, leaders of of tech industry. One well, day. don't. Oh, I mean, so I'm being cool to them. Was it just just? Yeah, a, hey, yeah, remember yeah. me. What do yeah. they call them? Like meets tournaments? Like are they always? Are they? It's are a they, tournament. It's a tournament. Is yeah. it always a tournament? Yes. So they they'll compete. Uh, so this one, if if they did well on this one, then they move to a higher competition. I believe it would be state competition. Then you do well there. Then you go national, and then you go world. Yeah. So my brother-in-law, he's a, like an engineer, and he was telling me like Lego does a lot of the uh, robotics tournaments uh, through the schools. Too. Yes. Was this part of that? No. It, so Lego's uh, younger kids. Lego goes okay. up to eighth grade. Okay. After that, then you don't use Legos anymore. You build them. Now it's NASA. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, you are. It's right. like you, steel, and they like weld it. Oh, and there, it was or? cool to see the different designs. Although there was one design that you could tell that was. Uh, super common because it was very effective but there were little differences in the designs of how they would put them together they're using controllers so they're all you know wireless and stuff and uh-huh. yeah it was really fun it's really cool so i imagine that, that cool. they they build towards a meet and it probably so it's like one meet probably every what month or two there's or? several tournaments throughout the year there's like yeah. a season not a lot though right like it, 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 i, would I think, don't know and don't do they know. build a new robot for every tournament or is it the same robot they keep refining it it depends on the on the tournament okay. itself so if it's the same like style tournament where you're stacking blocks then you can bring the same robot to each of the tournaments, maybe tweak it a little bit or whatever each time. Um, if it's a different competition, then you're probably going to want to build uh, a different robot. So, but and how it, how long does it take them to put? Like, I saw the robot; they're pretty. Uh, I mean, massive. They're big. They got all kinds of detail to them. They're fast. Like, how long do these these kids work on building something? Like so that? they built this one since the it, they built it at the beginning of the year. So they started working on this one at the beginning of the year. And you know how they start building them? They use computer models first. 
So they'll use a computer model, uh, build it like there. Like a CAD program or something? Yeah, or? I have no idea. But okay. they, that, So my son was explaining to me that they build it on the computer, mm -hmm. test it out there, then they build the actual model, and then they test it out, and then they and then that's it. They use that one, or if it doesn't work, they'll go back and, and change it or whatever. God, it's really they, cool. I just, I just remembered I took a whole robotics class in high school. I totally forgot when about it. When you went to high school? Yeah. Wow. Really? Yeah, but it was nothing like this. No. Like All we learned was like hydraulics, CAD programs. Like That's what I, Justin said that, and it sparked a memory for me. I had completely completely forgot yeah. that we did this. So back when I was in high school, that's that was the extent of robotics was like you I didn't even think I took a class like that. I did. I took a metal shop and wood shop and all that. And like metal shop was cool because you'd weld and you actually like would build. I built like a, a few different things. Like we actually would fashion our own um, screwdrivers and uh, I, I built uh, like a like a hammer and then I did a barbecue box and all kinds of like random things. But it was like just cool because you're doing it all with your hands and you know you mm -hmm. just don't get that kind of experience. And it was totally an elective. So I don't even think they have that program anymore. No, it's, it, it's cool. And it's cool to see the type of kids that are here they're obviously a bunch of you know tech math nerds like big time nerds but super smart friendly their parents are all like i was probably the only non-tech parent there you know what i mean like they're the yeah. parent you can see the parents know what's going on and i'm sitting there like, I have no like yeah i know instagram i'm a fitness yeah. guy <laughs> I know Instagram. You know what I'm saying? I know how to DM real well. Yeah. I know how to activate your biceps. <laughs> yeah. You know, on an exercise, right. but I don't know what's going on totally. with the machine. <clears throat> hey, so I, I've got this new uh, business plan that I'm going to do. Uh -oh. I, I ordered uh, my Magic Spoon cereal this weekend. And again, blueberries out. So right now I'm checking back every single Dang, day. Dang, I was just about to order some. Until it comes in and I'm going to buy because this is, I don't know how many times now I've gone to order and yeah. blueberry is always sold out. Blueberry I think the word's out, dude. I just haven't been aggressive about it so I'm going to, every day, I'm going to buy and then I'm going to sell it online for double the price. <laughs> You're going to do the, the little se don't secondary market? Yeah. yeah. Little I, secondary market? I mean, of, they can't be mad at that. Like, it's the demand's there. They're getting, they're selling out. Yeah, yeah. why not? It's, it's just like... Just they, scalping them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably not the is that word. illegal? Doug, can I scalp yeah. cereal? No, you can sell them on eBay. Oh boy, I don't know. Yeah. I is think it, you can sell them on eBay. I right? think you can. Sure. You do, people do that with stuff all the time, like sneakers. That's popular. Mm -hmm. Sneakers sell out. They resell them online. Oh, yeah, there's a Nike, market for Adidas. That now. Does, yeah, there's that's a whole right. Market. So why can't I do I that with know. cereal? Yeah, I think you probably well, can. Do it. You, you can probably make a pretty penny off the blueberry. I remember watching that with supplements. I remember when the over-the-counter yes. designer steroid supplements. And they would get pulled. They got pulled because- They'd be the, double the price. Oh, dude, you'd go on eBay, and they'd be selling a bottle of Super Draw for 250 bucks, <laughs> and kids were just buying it like crazy. Wow. Because, well, steroids. Yeah. So it made sense. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no steroids in Magic sp uh, Spoon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, not, not yet. Just yeah. high quality protein. Right. Yeah, You're not yeah. going to get the same gains as you would get with anabolics. I love, I mean, the the, no. f the fruity and the blueberry are the two that I love. So I, I mean, the, they were still the fruity ones left so that I ordered two boxes of that, but yeah. uh, I'm- Now, I'm how not often are you eating it? Oh, I eat it pretty regularly right now. Really? Oh, between Katrina and I, one of us is having a bowl probably every night or day. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, I typically yeah. eat it on the weekends. Yeah. yeah. I, I dig in on with the, with the, the kids. Ma the macros are great. And, the, and it takes, my for my, I have a sweet tooth. I've talked about that many times, right? That, you know, so I feel like I'm getting a treat and it's got 30 grams of protein in it. The calories aren't that high. Car carbs are low. Like, yeah. So it's like a guilt-free treat for me. It's It's like my favorite thing to do on a day. I give you like in, instead of a, a shake, a protein shake. Like mm -hmm. I, I would have a protein shake at the end of the night if I'm low protein. It's way more fun than a yeah. shake. Of course, yeah. it's, it's course. cereal. Yeah. Well, and I, yeah, I feel a little bit because my youngest doesn't eat a whole lot of protein and meat to begin with, and so it's like I feel like a little bit, uh, you know, like have given him that at least I'm like somewhat contributing to his protein, you know, because he really like I have to like you know, make sure he eats meat like all the time. Same thing so, with my daughter. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter does frustrating. My daughter does not gravitate to protein whatsoever. She's yeah. like a, a, it's either, it's He's either carbohydrates car head. or it's more carbohydrates. Yeah. Or more. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what, I, with what I have to do with her is I have to give her protein first and be like, well, if yeah. you don't finish this, you can't yeah, have doing that too. Yeah. You can't have your carbs. It's funny, but on the, uh, the when we did the father daughter dance, we had a, di we had dinner before <laughs> So her friend, you know, we meet up with their friends and the dads or whatever, and we all had uh, dinner at a restaurant, and they bring out the bread, right? And normally what I do with the bread basket is I'll allow, I'll tell the kids, you can have one, and then I'll tell the waiter or waitress, 
take the bread away because what ends up happening with kids is this. They eat the whole basket. They eat a whole basket of bread, and then the food hungry. comes, and they barely eat it. Yep. And I just get enraged because that, I bought- that, that doesn't just happen to kids. That happens to grown-ass adults, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. That happens to all of us. I mean, that's yeah. why I, like the appetizer thing is hilarious. Like If we go to a real- I, You know when I tend to do that? When we're eating like B-minus seafood. Yeah. If we're at, I'm at a restaurant where I'm like, eh, it's whatever, appetizer, whatever is before, then I'll eat. But if we're eating like a like a fifty dollar steak, yeah, nothing is worse than filling up on fucking cheap ass bread. <laughs> yeah. and your fifty dollar steak comes out. Yeah, and you if take- I'm a little uncertain about the entree, yeah, yeah I'm definitely loading up on yeah. that. Oh, it's, it was funny watching my daughter because it was you know it's a special day, so I'm not I'm like I'm not gonna tell her don't eat whatever. I'm like well, eat whatever you want. So the bread comes out, and this is what she does. She gets the piece of bread, and she's, can I? how much can I have? I'm like, just whatever. Enjoy yourself. It's a special day. Okay. She gets it, and she smells it first. <laughs> the, uh, the look that's, on gonna, her, that's gonna embarrass you in front of other parents. The look like, on her, I never. Jesus this. Christ, you feed your kid, guy. Oh. The lick, the look on her face. You know what I mean? Like, oh, so she Jesus, says, mm, I missed you. She touches it and then, uh, she eats it, and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> oh man, what is going on? Uh, the other parents are all looking at you like, Jesus. Of course, it's true. Though. I don't eat bread ever, so yeah. you know, it's probably it's like totally novel. And, and of now. course, I'm the fitness guy, right? Yeah. So they're looking at me like this. Was, this guy starves his kid. Yeah, what a, what a <laughs> she's, dick. She's like touching and smelling the bread before she eats it. <laughs> what the hell is going on? I missed anyway. you so much. Justin, how do you feel, bro? Because I know you're uh, you're 40. Oh, yeah. I'm feeling... I, dude, I feel great, man. I don't know what all the hype's about. You know? like I think yeah. like... It's weird because forty like now feels it just feels like thirty or tw- like whatever. You Stop know? fucking lying. I'm serious, <laughs> fucking guy. Let's go for a run after this. Then, uh, hey, he almost, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not doing that. Yeah, yeah I'm he, not gonna do that. He, you see, he held it back for. It feels yeah. like thirty or two, and he stopped. No, it doesn't <laughs> yeah, feel like twenty, feel like 20 <laughs> yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean the you know the waking up and the you know the different noises that come out of my mouth and all that kind of stuff are different, and so you know there's differences. Yeah, for but, sure. But I I don't know. I, to me, like, I don't know. I, I used to think of 40 being really old, like, with my parents and everybody else. And, like, I knew that it was the 40 was, like, over the hill was the big thing back in the day. But I just don't see that anymore. I feel like, like my dad's 73. He's still pretty mobile. Like, I mean, he's out of shape and everything. But I feel like we've kind of moved forward a bit more and we've kind of moved that 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 number up a bit Dude, uh, because of medical advances and everything. You're so right. I was talking to my parents about this last night. And, my my, my of course, my parents are immigrants right from Sicily and my dad now is 60 he's in his early 60s and he goes he goes it's so funny he goes you see someone today who's 50 he goes it doesn't look like they used to look he goes when I was a kid in Sicily oh, yeah. when you saw a 50 year old it was like crushed they were old as yeah. fuck like they had like the hump back and they're yeah. like oh, shrimped oh. out yeah like the- oh back in the day when I you know and he's like you see a 50 year old now and they look phenomenal in comparison he's like because back then they used to Bust their ass working. He was telling me that they yeah. would. He would, he would go to the to the square, the town square. That's usually what people would do at night. And he'd see men he'd just yell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he'd see men walking with their hands behind their backs, almost perpendicular to the floor. They would they would be so bent over from their backs being so fucked. Oh wow! In their fifties, and he says because they've been. You know, working yeah. in the dirt since Hard they were ass labor. seven years old. Yeah. He goes, their back was stuck. Like, yeah, form form that way for it, sure. Oh, he's it was super common. I was so. in a text thread this weekend with my my two best friends, the ones that have the the kids that are uh, a year and a year and a half older than mine, and. You know, they, we were going back and forth, and one of them uh, sends a message that says, I think we did this all wrong. <laughs> and um, and we're both the other two of us are like, what? What do you mean? And he's just like, bro, have you done the math on, you know, when our kids are, like, going to be in their early teens, you know, 12, 13 years old? Like, you, know, <laughs> you ain't going to be fucking running around with them. And yeah. I said, you know what? Fuck you two guys. Like, that's it. That's my motivation to stay fit and healthy into my 50s and 60s. Like, you fuckers are already yeah. waving the white flag right now. Yeah. Like, dude. No, dude. Like yeah. That's why I keep rotating my shoulders. Like, every day I'm doing that. Like, imagine when you can't throw a ball anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Like, that's horrible thought for me. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, there, I'll tell you what the pluses are of being an older uh, parent, okay? Number one is patience. This is a big one. Right. That's huge. Uh, okay. So, here's your evidence right now. If you're listening right now and you're thinking, what do you mean by that? Okay. If you have kids... And your parents, okay, who are now grandparents, watch your kids. Tell me you're not blown away by the patience that your parents all of a sudden display. Yeah. My dad, <laughs> yeah, was, my dad used yeah. to lose his <laughs> shit <laughs> yeah, 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 over the heater. Oh, right? uh, you turn the heater up dude, one degree of fucking. Dude, dude. I, where's the fucking remote? Ah! Yeah, I, oh, I remember my dad. My dad, my dad would punch that. the dinner table. You know. Yeah. Now I'm watching my 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 his grandkid like slap him in the face, and my dad laugh. 
I'm like, what is going on? Yeah. <laughs> Who is this man? Yeah. If I slapped my dad when I was a kid, it would have been terrible. My yeah. mom, all, oh, it's okay. The kids are screaming, but they're having fun or what. I'm like, who are you? Yeah. They're just older. Right. They're just older. They have more patience. So, so an older parent. at all. Yeah. You know, an older parent, you have more patience. You're smarter. You're less likely to, to, to do stupid shit. But yeah, you're older. You're, so you're, more, gonna... you're, you're a lot more patient, which a, a part that I think people don't think about either. You're extremely more patient with your partner too. Of course. And yeah. your relationship. And you have no idea how much that forms that little kid's brain when they're three, five, seven years old growing up. And, you know, like we, like Katrina and I are, are very aware of that. Like we had a, we had a disagreement yesterday. But having Max in the room, how we handle that is like on. A, we were already good, yeah. you know, with that with communication. Having our son in the room, it's like it's like this whole new like yeah. smiling at each other. And we're going <laughs> we like, to talk about this like, over in the corner. Like really, did you just yeah. say that to me yeah. right now? Yeah. Let's move <laughs> this into the bedroom. But you're so patient about it. Where fuck, my parents were fucking throwing frying pans at each other. Yeah. And shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm like ducking as a kid. Like yeah. so, yeah. you know, th those things like that really matters, and that really makes a big. And then you're also. And financial stability. Exactly. Is a I was just say you're probably in a better place financially. And so, the, again, another example, uh, and this is actually what what stirred it up was, you know, we had just we we paid for uh, two nights at uh, go we went to sanctuary again, paid for the nanny. Cause then Katrina came over the top of me, surprised us with Damn. refuge and uh, massages all day long, and I was kind of getting on to her about spending the extra money. So that was what it was all, what it was all about. And at the end of the day, like when we all settled everything, I'm like, listen, I'm really not. Like it's not like it's a big deal. It's not mm -hmm. like we we can't afford to do that. I just I, right now I told her twenty twenty. I'm like really aggressively saving, so I'm making all these sacrifices. I already paid for an expensive two days for us to go get away at the beach and everything like that. So I had already kind of justified that. Like without you communicating the extra, you know, three hundred or four hundred dollars that we spent, I was like, okay, I probably wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. You know, so. You know, that was the conversation that we're having back and forth, but, and I was frustrated inside, but the way we communicate that in front of the kid is, is totally different. But, and at the end of the day, it didn't, none of it matter because we can afford to do it. We're okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't put us in a hardship. Yeah. When you're young, when you have kids in your twenties, man, that is hard. It's hard. Financially, it's very difficult. You're just probably starting your career. You're not making a ton. Of, now there's of course advantages to being younger. You have a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. You're, you're healthy, you know, in, in terms of your, your odds of having a healthy child physically, or a little bit higher, but if you take care of yourself, boy, that makes a makes a big difference. And then for dads, you know, for fathers, being older isn't nearly as big of a deal. If you're an older mom, you know, it's difficult. Like you have, a, if I know some women that had kids in their late 30s or early 40s, even that can be pretty challenging on the body. Mm -hmm. But for a man, I mean, <laughs> just, well, it, yeah. it, I just, think it, I think it's the same. It's the same theory though, even with them. I mean, Katrina's an example of that she's 39. You know, but fit and healthy. Exactly. Yes, fit, fit and healthy. Mm -hmm. Body bounced right back right away. Totally. Her energy levels are. Fun. Oh, she looks amazing. Right. She looks like, like she didn't even have a kid. Right. So I mean, I think that uh, you know the the biggest thing that she's having challenge. I know I get people ask all the time, so I should share more of her journey. The hardest thing that she's having. Like with breastfeeding, like the the stats on that is definitely got to be close to right. What they say, how many calories you burn more by mm. breastfeeding? She can't keep weight on her. Really? You know? Yeah. So her her That's how Courtney was too. Yeah, her big thing that frustrates her is her shape to her body. She's not as muscular as she's used to being, so she feels she. But she's lean as shit. She's leaner than what she was before she mm. before we even had Max. So body fat wise, she's phenomenal and she's in good shape. Yeah, it's when she stops breastfeeding that it'll all it'll <laughs> yeah, go yeah. back. Yeah, what she's having a hard time is building muscle. Mm. She's having a hard time with packing the muscle on and normally and part of the, that's twofold, right? So one, uh, breastfeeding, she's burning so many calories she can't hardly keep up and she's moving around with the kid all the time. Yeah, she's producing. Two, think about it. You're making protein shakes out of your body, right? Yeah. Of course, it's gonna be hard to build, yeah. dude. Yeah. No, it's it's insane. It I, takes I, a lot I, of resources. She she eats too. She she's putting down food right now. She's keeping up with me. Is she eating a lot of steak, red meat? Yeah. Oh, no, good. Yeah, good. no, she's uh, I mean, and her diet's been dialed this entire time. So that's part of why she looks so good. The hardest thing for her is the is the consistency of lifting. And when I say things like that, like for us. That means there's you know sporadic weeks where we only get one lift and like we never don't lift like mm -hmm. it's it's happening but for us if we're lifting one to three times in a week that's really low mm -hmm. frequency for both her and I 
that's the hardest thing as parenting. It's been that. It's been, and the joke in our house is like, you know, hey, one of us has to represent, you know, like, so we make this like <laughs> Rochambeau who's going to the gym. It's like, well, yeah. someone's got to stay home and watch Max right now. Like, one of us gets our workout. And I'm like, listen, I've, you know, I'm the guy who's on media. Dude, do you, you know? see now, but do you see now <laughs> yeah. the value in having a home gym when now that you have oh, a kid? Oh, I, I tell you what, if. Because that's, because then you got, what you do is you put your boy right in the, the, the playpen right there and just do your thing. 100%. I mean, the next house, like, we're looking right now, and the, the next house will have to have at least a three car garage because I want to convert one of the stalls into a, an at home gym mm-hmm. for that. It, just having a kid, like there's already been many times where her and I, if, uh, if that was the case, it would be so easy for her to go downstairs Get you her. watch the baby because we already kind of do out. it. We have a rower and we have kettlebell, but that gets lame after a while. Two fucking pieces of equipment, mm-hmm. like you can do that so often before you're just like, okay, I'm over. I want to lift. I want to mm-hmm. squat. I want to deadlift. I want to do those things. So, mm-hmm. you know, having like an, an at home gym, to, that's a that's mandatory. And in in the technology with at home gyms, uh, obviously our sponsor PRX is a good example of this. It's way different than it used to be. Now you have racks that fold into the wall. You have um, so. you know, great barbells and dumbbells and. You know, great equipment where back in the day it took up a lot of space because a cage didn't fold into the wall. So it's like you're just taking up a shit ton right. of space. Yeah. Weights weren't as great or whatever, you know. So. I'm so excited to showcase what we're building at, at Tahoe right now because it's we, – you guys know that next next week it all comes in, right? Oh, all uh, the equipment that yeah, we yeah, got. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Order, order's in. It'll be there when I'm there for that week. It's supposed to get shipped in. I oh, know. my gosh. Yeah. I'm so excited. I know. So we went uh, bananas with all their stuff. So we're going to have – a, a full on yeah that'll be a good display piece yeah, yeah. so I'm super pumped out. no yeah, I just love it too because the kids there's something to be said about them just watching you work out you that's don't have it to too. say anything dude you know like it like I just like pick up the weights or I'll start squatting I'll start benching and uh, you know they'll they'll kind of walk in, walk through, and just, they're just curious. What what's dad doing? You know, and like and what so a they, good point that I didn't even think about. Oh, dude, yeah. I listen. You guys, a hundred percent. I started lifting weights consistently at fourteen. Of course, I was driven to whatever, but I started because I had a weight set in the back. My dad had a weight set. Yeah. Had he not had a weight set, I would have started much later. A hundred percent. Because who's going to take me to the gym? How many get there? Whatever. No, no, totally. It makes a big difference. And now that I think about it, that's exactly we started because my friends dad had a garage See? gym and that that's how we start we started lifting on his equipment when we were in seventh and yeah, eighth you get grade. that confidence too because you've yeah. seen it you watch it you know it's a part I'll of the teach life him, i'll teach them little things here and there i'm not like trying to create a program for them or anything it's just like their curiosity sparks more conversations no you're and that's the to me that's one of the best ways to get them involved in it is not to force it on them so i was it's so funny I'm yes 100 like, percent. I'm, I'm already thinking like this right yeah, so dude. i told katrina yesterday we just got back from uh, my nephew playing basketball and it sparked this like thing in me right away. I was like, oh my God, I told him next year I'd volunteer for assistant coaching. And like now I have this desire to do it, which never had any desire to do anything like that. And I told Katrina yesterday, I'm like, hey, I want the nanny this week to push the baby down to the park and you and I are going to go play ball. Just you and I are going to play ball and he's going to sit and watch. <laughs> like, I just, <laughs> yeah. like, that's a priority of mine because I like that's I just want him to see mom and dad playing mm-hmm. because I feel like if he's around it enough, I don't have to force it on him and say, you play or want, you're like, hey, do you want to, like just it's, seeing us do FOMO, it? dude. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right. They so, know. Yeah. no, I'm, because if be that makes sense it. with the lifting. Yeah, and, and you, what, you, what you don't want to do is you don't want to cause the reverse, you know, because I, I have friends whose dads pushed him so hard to do a sport or something and they hated it. And then as soon as they got old enough to say yeah, no, yeah. they never, I have a, 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 you know, my ex-brother-in-law could have been a phenomenal, I guarantee you would have made it at least the college level with soccer, but because his dad pushed him so hard when he got old enough to, you know, when you get to the teens, you can kind of say no and push back. Yeah. He stopped playing, never yeah. wanted to play. Well, now, I was worried about that. That's why I didn't like sign up for coaching right away, but I've actually found that coaching has helped tremendously just because yeah. I mean, proximity, me being there teaching the other kids and he watches me teach them and he's like oh my dad and like knows things you know <laughs> and then he's like more receptive to listening to me you know otherwise it's just dad saying things oh i love it and you know here uh, here's the other thing too i've i have trained when i had my wellness studio because it was mine right i owned it so i could make the rules in there and i trained a lot of uh pregnant mothers and mothers uh, who then had young infant babies they never stopped the workouts and one of the reasons why they never stopped their workouts is because they could bring in their baby in the little carrier or whatever, and me as the trainer would swing the carrier, hold the baby, feed them while mom worked out was a huge value. Oh, yeah. You have a home gym, 
right? It's not hard. You could easily go in there with your 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 significant other and here, hold the baby. I'm going to do a set. Right. Mm-hmm. And then, okay, now you do a set. I'll hold the baby. You don't even have to take, well, you I can literally know. work out together. That's, I mean, I don't know mm-hmm. if you, here we have to come down here. So there's, there's a little bit of an inconvenience there, but that's how we do it now. Like Katrina and exactly. I come to the gym. If you haven't seen us already, that's what we do is we come down here. Mm-hmm. And, and typically what I like to do is I like to have started my workout and get a head start. So I've got like a bulk of it done. And then she comes. And then I'm kind of like relieving her while oh, she's yeah. getting sets in, and we're kind of going back and forth while we're now finishing. think about the what kind of an environment that creates. So when I used to do this with my clients, uh, uh, with their kids, their kids develop such a good relate because then I would train the mom for you know the next five or six years. So now this infant that I'm rocking and playing with, you know, is three years old, four years old, five years old. By the time they get a little older, I'm setting up little obstacle courses where they're playing while mom's working out. They have a, a, a different association with the gym to them. The gym is a fun place. It's a part of life. Mom is happy. Yeah. This, you know, whatever. Or mom and dad are, are having a good time. We're hanging out, and it dramatically increases the odds that your kid later on will make the choice. Because that's what ideal, right? The ideal thing is that your kid chooses to make fitness a part of their life. You know, yeah. and, and it's hard not to push them, but that's what you want. You want them to be like, "Hey, I want to do that." Because then the odds that they'll stay consistent yeah. are right. much, much higher. Right. Here's right. a fun fact: it probably. Doesn't relate to any of that. Well, actually, it does uh, relate to this on some level. It's it's about chimps, though. <laughs> so what? yeah, no, I, I was watching this documentary. This guy had had been following chimps. Like I don't know what the famous one was before that that had, had given us all this information about you know some of their characteristics that were unique and everything else. But this is a new one that I never had heard of before. Like that they had documented these chimps like with their behavior, they were starting to put rocks like on the back of their head and like on their back and they carry it with them. And then they're just, they even would like end up sleeping with these rocks or sticks. And like the, these were all like the, the baby chimps. So these are the baby chimps that had like showed this behavior and they're like, they're trying to figure out what these sticks or these like, like totems were signifying to them and like why they had, you know, brought them with them is it like a doll or a toy to them yeah oh that's so, so literally they're, they're they were coddling it like a little baby they were like mimicking what their mom was doing with them with the rock and with the stick oh wow and like this is a whole like human characteristic thing they didn't even you know notice before that they were doing dude chimps are interesting do you know how violent they are Oh have you, yeah, they'll, have you, they'll shred faces off. Oh, have you seen the videos of? Well, they'll have like a, a chimp gang, right? So it's like a bunch of younger, you know, adult kind of adult but younger chimp males that represent one tribe, and they'll they'll go to another area with another chimp group or whatever, and then they'll go to war, mm-hmm. and they will destroy the other side. Well, you guys, uh, you, do you both have Disney Plus? Yeah, I do. Mm-hmm. do you have, so you should watch the, the I, I forget what it, what chimp uh, wanted, it, what, what it's called, the title of it is, but I told you that Disney does like a different version of like, um, what's the other one that we all watch on uh, Netflix? That, Planet Earth, right? Oh, yeah, Earth. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's a different, like they tell a story, and they give names to all the like animals, and they and so what I thought was fascinating is the hierarchy that they they naturally are born into, where and they have they all live in this like massive tree, and you know both could be born around the same time. Like they were showing like these female chimps how they are with each other, and if one they had the five that are like the the rich class and they get to be on the top um. branches and they have they have others that that come and groom them and they mm. just lay there and the other chimp female chimps are grooming them and taking care of their nails and they their have a hair. Hierarchy. Yeah, and if the other one tries to climb up, they whoop the shit kick out of them. Yeah, yeah, kick her kick her off the branch and she's got to stay down below and get the scraps that fall down that that's all she gets for her and her baby. And so they automatically fall into this hierarchy and then they treat each other like that. It's fucking wild. Monkeys are you know what my favorite yeah. monkeys are? They're the I don't remember what they're called, <laughs> but the bonobos. No. Yeah, okay. No, no, not the <laughs> not the sex fueled bonobos. Uh the the yeah. they're these it's monkeys. What I thought. They're in Japan. They're in the mountains of Japan, freezing in the snow. So these are like snow monkeys. And they go in and they do like like they're like natural jacuzzis. They're like yeah, springs that are those. hot. Yeah, uh-huh. And they'll those chill. Funny Have you seen monkeys. pictures? Yeah. yeah. They'll chill in these hot jacuzzis in the snow. Look at these and they, bright pink faces dude, and white fur. Dude, they, there they are. Look at they look like old men. Yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah. yeah they, uh, they make He's these like, faces. Ah, yeah. Just chilling. And yeah. anyway, I was watching one uh, documentary of them, and uh, there was like this one monkey that was trying to get into the jacuzzi. I saw that. They kept throwing them out. Yeah. Like, yeah. nah, dude, you're not. 
not allowed. You're not so, allowed. So they're just kind of watching. Exclusive. Yeah, and there's a bunch of them in there just chilling. Like, yeah, we're we're chilling. Those activity. are hot springs, right there. They're in. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, and 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 they like look at their faces. They look like little old men. They do, dude. Just That's hang. pretty hilarious. They don't do anything but chill in there. See. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a little spa time. Isn't that great? That is funny. Anyway, yeah. dude, I got uh, into. Uh, I've been doing this more and more lately. I haven't done this in a long time. I took a break from it, but uh, I think I'm back. Uh, to being an asshole on on uh, social media. Uh, yes, he's yeah, back. I went on uh, Facebook, and you know how I belong to these groups, and they post things and talk about whatever. Yeah, last time you got ripped by vegans. Right? Yeah. Anyway, so I I belong to all these different groups. There was a science group that posted this article that showed uh, a quote from Neil. What's his name? DeGrasse Neil deGrasse Tyson. He, yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Anyway, smart dude, obviously brilliant scientist, but something he said that was really stupid. That annoyed the shit out of me, um, and I, so I had to go on there and you know say my two cents. And basically, what he says in in this article is that, that scientific illiteracy threatens the United States. And he talks about how the U.S. Uh, you know the average person doesn't know science, doesn't know math. We're so dumb. We're way behind other countries. China's you know test scores test scores are kicking our ass or whatever. So I went on there and I said, okay, first off, uh, surveys. These are surveys. So you're asking average people. Go to China. Ask the average person. You'll get people that believe in yeah. the, you know, crazy gods and mythology. You'll get people who believe everything their government tells them because that's, it's a communist country. You're going to get lots of different things. Test scores from schools. Okay, does that have a lot of importance? Well, let's look at the result of that. Mm. America innovates at the highest level in science, technology, and medicine by far. There's no, yeah. there's not even close to a competition with other countries. So I said, look at the results, and we went back and forth, and I said, okay, I don't care. Not to mention they're a state-driven country, which, like, who's to say that they're not manipulating numbers? I And again, what look at America. America innovates in tech, science, and medicine better than any country in the world, and it's a reflection of our culture, which values independent thought, it values risk taking. Our country values risk taking more than other countries. So lots of people take chances. So obviously we're doing something right. So yeah. it was anyway, it was a nice uh, back and forth. I was going to say, did you get fi people firing back? Oh yeah, there were pi oh people. They were saying like, oh, there's people who are there's flat earthers, and I'm like, there's idiots everywhere. Like, yeah, it's not just here, <laughs> yeah, dude. news flash. Yeah. You know, we just tend to get broadcasted because we're you know America. So everybody thinks that whatever. But I said, look at our innovation. Well, yeah, what was, I, I saw a stat on that one. Well, we have like like fifteen of the top like twenty five companies in the world. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it's, that started here. Like you look at all the Netflixes, the Airbnbs, the uh, uh, our Google, Teslas, the Facebook, Googles, Facebook, Amazon, like, Amazon, everybody. Yeah, dude. And when you and you look at the comp the companies that are like similar or trying that are they're they're nowhere near. They're no reaching nowhere near the amount of people. No, the 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 amount of capital that's invested into uh, innovation risk. Because innovation requires a great deal of risk, right? When you're innovating, you're literally trying to do something that no one else has. Mm -hmm. That means you're you. There's a high risk of failure. Uh, the most capital that's invested in innovation, by far, even if you do a per capita uh, statistic, um, is in this country. And again, I think it's the culture we value risk taking and individual thought and ideas. And we're a melting pot. We have a lot of different ideas. We tend we tolerate different ideas better than anyone else. Not perfect. Yeah. And so I that's that was the that was the argument. So I'd love to. I wish I you know I could I could message Neil uh, deGrasse Tyson and tell him, yeah I, you know don't say things that are not true. Sure uh, you you can look at test scores and all that stuff, but. We're still crushing people. Have we thought to have Bro. him? On the, have we thought to have him on the show? We, I would love to. He's been oh, on yeah. a he's been on a few of our friends' podcasts. Mm -hmm. That's somebody I haven't even thought to reach out I to. I would love to. Yeah, well, we I should, would love to. Should, I mean, I mean, otherwise he's a, a great conversation. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I'm a huge fan uh, of him. So anyway, uh, along those lines, looking up more interesting uh, studies, um, they uh, I, another study came out that linked low fat diets to low testosterone um, in men. So this study showed that men who diet by going low uh, fat, notice a measurable drop in testosterone. Um, and when they dr increase their fat uh, back up, their testosterone levels go back up. And they did control for calories because cutting calories can have that effect on men regardless. Mm -hmm. But going low fat seems to have a more negative effect on testosterone. This makes sense. Uh, fat is an essential right. macronutrient and it's used uh, you know, in, 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 in making some of these important chemicals and compounds in the body that lead to hormones. So if you're a man and you're trying to diet 
and get leaner, um, I would suggest testing your testosterone to see if you start to notice uh, declines and then maybe going lower carb, higher fat to see if you can kind of offset that a little bit. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to do a shout out to one of our listeners, um, Brett Edelman. So shared, uh, I got this in my, it's tough, right? So I, obviously we, we don't get to open and get to all of the DMS anymore. Uh, but occasionally I come across like one like this that, uh, you know, I'm like, you know what? I want to start highlighting these. I get these all, the, all the time and I don't share them. And Man, I was impressed. He just, so, and now we just had we've had power lift out long enough, so people are are finishing and coming through and like going to their first meet or uh, oh or, maps power lift. Yeah, yeah, and so he went through maps power lift. Dude's only twenty four years old, and he hit in both his deadlift and his squat uh, PRs at his most recent meet. So he squatted five seventy. Oh, he, he benched two ninety. He said he missed three hundred five, which would have put him over the fifteen hundred total. And he how deadlift- much does he weigh? Uh, 190 was was he 196? Wow. wow, yeah. So 196 pounds, 24 years old, putting up 570 on a squat, what a stud. 618 on a deadlift, and then 290 on his bench. Holy, t- holy yeah. Toledo! I know, right? Yeah, we the- can't be making. We need to start making programs not as effective. <laughs> uh, no, I'm feeling everybody's stronger than us. Yeah. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> no, what's going on yeah. here? <laughs> we gave it all away. Yeah. Powerlifting competitions are. Um, I you know. Motivating yourself by entering into a competition usually doesn't result in long-term success, but I do like powerlifting competitions because it changes the focus, Mm -hmm. especially for women. I actually love powerlifting competitions for women because it takes their focus off of how their body looks Mm -hmm. to how their body performs. And for a lot of the the female clients I've worked with, um, it was a great step towards having a better relationship. Well, this is I, with and exercise. He, and here's the yeah. thing: I, I don't uh, I don't think you need to. I think if you can go into like a Maps Powerlift program, like that has enough value in itself. Like you don't have to actually go to a meet and compete and like compare. But train to, like you're going yeah. to. Right. Exactly. Tra- the just the training that way, I think, has a ton of value for both men and women especially if you come from the camp of being mostly focused on aesthetics and wanting to lose fat or you don't like the way you look, it does teach you a lot just about like ignoring a lot of that stuff and focus just on the numbers because the value that that has. And the irony of that is when you learn that discipline to not stress so much about what's going on with body fat percentage or the scale weight and just focus on your Mm -hmm. results and and how much weight you're lifting – the the carryover of muscle and metabolism and everything like that is, is well. It's just funny too. I was listening uh, to one of uh, Joe Rogan's latest uh, podcasts. He was interviewing this like astronaut, one of the leads for SpaceX, and how they're you know innovating and in, like uh, I guess a lot of these other companies uh, like Boeing and all these other companies they're planning to like launch this year at some point like this whole program. Uh, but th- he was talking about how their uh, the way that they train has changed dramatically. They used to have a machine that only did uh, you could do like a ton of volume in terms of reps, but like the actual load wasn't like a whole lot. And then so they flipped that and they made the machine that they had in space. So it's like very much high load, low reps, and they were able to maintain their their muscle and their bone density, unlike anything previously they've done before. Of course, this right? Is, it's like, duh, yeah, but how, it's how, confirmation. How annoying! It totally. How annoying though! I've, all NASA had to do was consult with a few experienced trainers. With mind pump. Yeah, yeah. Like, like come like, on, NASA. Like we, <laughs> right here, dude. <laughs> I, I could have told you that twenty years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but of course, if you want to, because one of that's the biggest challenge. One of the biggest challenges with astronauts going in space and staying out there oh bro big time yeah big time when you think about it uh from a a muscular standpoint you're in like your entire body's in a cast because you're there's zero gravity that's right so there's no vestibular system and all that gets really messed up when you come back oh a lot of stuff gets fucked up but definitely they lose muscle they lose bone density then they come back and it's not a good situation so it's really important this is like a big thing for them how do we prevent the atrophy that happens yeah in space and heavy resistance training is the best thing by far superior. Now, the other part is I, I don't, and I, I'm, I, they don't say they do this, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did put astronauts on testosterone at the same time. Yeah, I know. They wouldn't advertise that, but that I'm sure make, that's part of the well, protocol. That would make total sense. Right? It would make total sense because the health effects of going zero gravity are very detrimental. Very bad, yeah. Yeah, our human body did not evolve in that environment, and it can have some some catastrophic. Wow, well, what even... was interesting was, too, he brought up this point that I, I thought was a, a cool idea. Like, 
he was like, I was, I was literally like evolving to where like a fish, you know, where they're getting less dense in terms of their bone density. But if I were to stay in space, like my body's adapting to that environment. So it's like, you know, you're, you're shedding a lot of the mass or whatever, cause you don't have those gravitational forces or anything. And it's like, what would we actually turn into, you know, if you stayed up there the whole time without gravity, we would look like skinny, wispy, You'd like, wh- yeah. Like the aliens that you think that well, people think aliens look like, right? With the big eyes and the head and, and the real small. Sk- skinny arms. Yeah, long skinny yeah. fingers. Like all the blood you're pumping is pumping into your head for the most part. So it's like he said the first time he woke up in space, like the, the next morning, it felt like he had been stand, like doing a handstand all night. So his face is all puffy and all the blood was oh, in his head. Maybe know. this is where all these alien drawings came from. Maybe it's just somebody who got stuck in That's space alien, like yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, it's making perfect sense now. Well, yeah. that is one of the theories. One of the theories Oh, is, is it? One of the theories is that alien visitations uh, are just some dude who got stuck. A long they're time just ago. humans from the future yeah. that are uh, visiting us from the future to observe us and watch us. I like us that theory. I also like that they're they're sort of some bio, uh, like like robotic, like some kind of you know they're they're not actually human. They're some kind of artificial like form. Mm, well, it, there's what is that called? The Fermini uh, paradox, which is why hasn't life found us and why haven't we found life yet? If, mm-hmm. if there is life out there. And they're basically like saying, well, it must be way less than we think, or maybe we're, you know, maybe we're, the, we're all that there is. Kind of crazy, right? Ooh, well, yeah. let's, let's end there. Yeah. <laughs> First question is from J. Kendall 503. Can you build your physique, specifically your legs, with just free weights? I solely train in my garage with a wide variety of barbells, plates, dumbbells, and a few other non-machine items. Are you kidding? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, nothing's going to build your legs. A real question. No, nothing's going to build your legs more than those things right there. Doing barbell back squats, front squats, zercher squats, doing Bulgarian split scant split stance squats with dumbbells, lunges, stiff legged deadlift, dead, oh legged deadlift. God, yeah. I, I worked out uh entirely uh, exclusively with free weights for 14 years uh when i had my my wellness studio i had a cable machine in there that i would use occasionally but i had a rat i mean it was a small studio for personal training clients so we didn't have tons of equipment and in in if you have you've seen studios like this because really really good trainers typically don't use a lot of machines they'll use body weight exercises maybe physio balls bands um, because the best exercises are not ones that are limited to the shape of a machine. Because a machine, there's nothing wrong with machines, okay? But one of the big drawbacks to machines is that they're 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 designed for an average person. Yeah. So someone moves a little differently. They're shorter. They're taller. They don't typically work. Now free weights form to the person, and of course the best exercises that are out there are free weight exercises. And I don't miss machines. If I do use machines, it's because I'm going to a gym and it's something different. Well, so. that's just the one thing is education, you know, and like learning the moves. And so it does take a little bit of that. And that's why, you know, trainers are around. And I prefer trainers to stick with free weights because like people need to learn these things and learn these exercises, uh, how they're going to benefit their body the most. Like machines are pretty straightforward. I mean, they got like three picks and like you just kind of form your body into some of these, like the leg extension and, you know, like, like leg curl. And so that's probably what. I'm, I'm just assuming that they're used to those types of, of uh, you know, equipment and things to use for their legs. The but truth, there's a whole host of exercise out there. The truth is, though, that, and this is the thing where I always try and and, and teach or, or stress to new beginners is that the, what makes free weights, the, the benefits and the results is because it is difficult. Because it's difficult to get good at squatting. It's difficult to get good at a deadlift. Like... And it's it's that because of that is part of why you get such great results. We now we talk about the the science and the studies part. We'll talk about all about how much muscle activation and load and yeah, okay, that's all true too. But really, it's it's the novelty of the exercise and why it's, it's why when you switch a program or you do something completely different, why the body responds so well. So doing exercises that are really difficult to get well and it takes months and months and sometimes years for people to perfect that your body is adapting and changing that whole process where get in a leg press machine or get in a leg extension machine and you could take the most novice person and put them in that and within two weeks they get it you know what i'm saying yeah. it's not like it's difficult for them to do it well that's great and all yeah and for we can show with e machines how much muscle is being activated and oh can they do it? yeah yeah 
but there's also something to be said about that pro that neuromuscular adaptation that happens and yeah. occurs that is already that's pretty much your body's adapted I, to that part. I just love it's the barbells and dumbbells are the original first you know fitness equipment uh, that was ever invented and used until this day, hundreds of years later or hundred years later, uh, it's still the best. Free weights are still the best. There is no machine that can do what a barbell can do. I literally can take a barbell and I could write down hundreds of exercises that you could do with it. Machines typically do one thing, one exercise, or maybe two. A cable, even, which has the most versatility of all equipment, still can't match uh, the what, what uh, a barbell, a uh, single barbell can do. If you have a home gym and you have a cage, you have a barbell, dumbbells, and an adjustable bench, you're done. Yeah, yeah. Like you can do everything with that. You can do almost anything you want. You can develop the most amazing physique ever with just that equipment. In fact, that's the, that's what I prefer. That's what I still to this day, majority of my exercises revolve around those pieces of equipment right there. And the cool thing is today, nowadays, uh, equipment, I mean, I talked about this earlier in the intro, uh, at home gym equipment used to be terrible. I mean, your choices when you were, when I was younger, the choices for at home equipment were, you know, sand filled plastic weights, or I had to buy commercial equipment, which was super expensive and it took up a ton of space. Nowadays, you have things like companies like PRX, which you got a, a cage that folds in the wall just as sturdy um, and good as any commercial uh, equipment. Barbells and dumbbells are really, really good quality nowadays. Plates are really good quality. Adjustable bench are, are, are good quality. Boy, you could do a ton. And I'll tell you what, this is the other part. If you ask experienced trainers, coaches, and strength coaches, what are the top 10 best, most effective overall muscle building, strength building, just <laughs> functional strength they'll, building? They'll be all barbell dumbbell exercises. I mean, mostly, right? Yeah. I'm sure there'll be a few machines in there towards the bottom, but, the, but at least 70%, if not more, of the equipment that will be listed in that top 10 will consist of uh, something you do with a free weight. Um, so you've got the best exercises at your fingertips. You definitely don't need uh, lots of machines. The only machine I would ever add to a home gym, honestly, would be a cable, some kind of a cable machine. And why? Because a cable machine is more like free weights than it is like machines right. because of its versatility, because you're not stuck into a, you know, a path or, or a form. Right. Next question is from Haley Phillips 34 I'm not feeling very sore a day or two after I go to the gym. Does that mean I'm not working out hard enough? Should I increase my rep ranges or weight? I remember when when I thought soreness was a good indicator yeah. of of workouts. In fact, that was the I think we've all been there. Well, yeah. I, I remember the first time I read that it was actually a sign of overtraining, and Ugh. it blew my it just shattered my paradigm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because up until that point. Uh, that was what I was always seeking, and if I didn't get sore, I was disappointed in the workout yeah. and can thought of it as something that was it's almost worthless. Right, right? that's yeah. how it, that was the attitude until I read that, and it, I believe it was an article that it, it, back back when I was going through my NASM, I think they had shared it, and I had read that and I thought, what? It's actually a sign of overtraining, mm -hmm. and so it's a it's a more accurate sign of that than it is of a good workout. It's a terrible. It, it doesn't tell you at all. Yeah. yeah, if your workout was was good or not. I I the in, here I'll take it a step further. I didn't make the best gains of my life until I stopped getting sore. Yeah. Okay. So before that point, every workout the the, the one of the main goals was can I make myself really really sore for the next few days, and if I didn't. I'd go back to the drawing board and try to figure out a way yeah. to get myself really sore. No. My best gains came from when I stopped getting sore. I wouldn't get sore from my workouts, and I was getting the best gains ever, and it was because I figured out exactly what you said, Adam. Now, I, I, I wanted, I also want to be clear that I'm sore today. Uh, I over, I overreached. And so that's how I look at it now is I, I overreached a little bit. In a perfect world for myself when I'm trying to uh, gauge like how hard I push myself or how much volume I should be doing because that changes, right? Like your consistency. Uh, the workout I did that got me really sore right now is mainly because I've been really inconsistent the last 
you know, four weeks or so ever since I got sick. So I overreached. Uh, normally when I'm in a, a rhythm and I've been training very consistently, I don't overreach like that. So what I'm looking at is can I add volume uh, either through lifting more weight by increasing the weights uh, that I'm lifting or increase intensity within the workout without getting sore? That is a win all the way. If I know that, hey, this workout, I did more today than I did the previous workout like this or I lifted more on my bench or I lifted more on my squat than I did the previous time and I don't get sore, that's a fuck. That is a, right? That's like when you hit when you hit a baseball and you hit right on on the fucking right where you're supposed sweet to spot, the yeah. sweet spot and it feels effortlessly in the ball sails versus when you muscle it and it get, gets out into the outfield like it's, i think there's degrees too you know there's degrees of like i feel tight and a little bit restricted versus like i feel like like you know like i can't even lift my arms you know like there's, there's <laughs> been degrees of where i've like crushed myself and like i know too uh this is where it's crucial in the very beginning if you're a beginner and you're working with a trainer you're just doing this on your own uh and, and you're you're trying to to get the most out of it and where you know you feel that soreness is kind of normal like the first few weeks you're gonna you're gonna feel like a different tightness a different stimulus and that's okay if, if you're going if you're exceeding that to where it's like pain and like it's hard to get out of bed and like you you, you know that's definitely not a place that's optimal you could draw a very clear and now that i think about it you could draw a very clear line uh in my career as a trainer that will tell you on one end of that line, I was not a good trainer. On the other end of that line, I was a really good trainer. This is actually, now that I think about it, probably one of the best metrics for me in terms of gauging how good I was. And here's what it is. Before that line, when I would ask a client, you know, they would, I'd train them, I'd take them through a session, then I'd see them for their next workout a few days later. Ask the following they were week. sore. I'd say, hey, yeah. how sore were you? And if they said to me, oh my gosh, I could yeah. barely move. Like, I couldn't yes. even brush my teeth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I used to think to myself like, yes, we did a good job. Got yeah. you. Now, on the other side of the line, when I became a good trainer, if the client said to me, um, I, I, I kind of felt it a little bit, but not much. Oh, we did a great uh, job. Yeah. We yeah. did a good workout. Let's stay there. Yeah. Totally different. Uh. On one end, I was a terrible trainer. On the other end, I became a very successful trainer. I preferred, actually, I, I would, the, the goal was for my client to not feel sore, but rather feel maybe a little bit like they worked out. Like, oh, I could kind Listen, of feel if the muscle. Listen, if they're not sore but energetic. And, and you're adding weight to the bar, you were fucking winning. Oh, that's a hundred. That's the best. Yes. Oh, if yeah. you were adding weight to the bar, and or able to increase intensity into the in the workout and you are not getting super sore from that you are fucking winning totally body totally. is adapting getting stronger building muscle it's happening so totally. that is that's the sweet spot and of course when you're trying to hit that you tend to sometimes flirt with the overreaching a little bit and that's your kind of gauge of okay like i the way i'm reflecting on my workout on saturday that hindered me with lifting on Sunday because I overreached and I'm really sore still today is I went, fuck, I could have eliminated that exercise or mm -hmm. I could have stopped at two sets instead of doing four sets. Like that's yeah. what, how my brain is mm -hmm. working because I did way more than I needed to, to get my body to start to adapt and change. So I'm always ser searching for that. But the next workout, I want to make sure that I stretch myself a tiny bit and then not get as sore. If I can do that, boy, you're winning right there. That's it's what you're funny. Like I don't, I don't really get sore from workouts anymore. I get sore from yard work. <laughs> like that kills me, dude. <laughs> like I was helping my dad the other day move some log rounds, and it's just awkward sizes, and you know you're leaning over a lot, and of course you're trying to like max exert to be able to get things going. And man, it just killed myself. Well, that's because your goal isn't to work out. No, your goal get was done with the job. I got yeah. I don't yeah. care how much it hurts. I got to finish the job. <laughs> so totally. a workout's goal is not. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny when you're working out, you're not like building anything or moving anything. Right. You're picking up weights and putting them down. The goal is to get your body to progress and Different soreness. Mentality. Soreness does not indicate a great workout. It, 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 quite the contrary, if you're really, really sore, it indicates you had a bad workout. Whoa, that's what we, we had a great discussion. So this person, if you're if uh, you didn't listen to the episode we did with Max Marzo, uh, he got into this and he actually talked. What I forget what he what he uh, uses a term. He, of, there's like a there's like a minimal effective dose. There's a maximal effective dose. There's a minimal dose that that where it starts to take away from your progress. And right. A, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, I forgot what he called. Yeah. It, there but. comes there becomes a point where even if you're getting you're getting 
sore, sure, it doesn't mean it, you can still progress because there's obviously some. There's a. There's definitely people listening right now. They're like, "That's bullshit." I get I'm sore, sore all the time, crazy. and yeah. my body looks great. And yes, it, you. There, there's a point though when it, the the returns on it are start to diminish, mm. and you're doing more, and you wouldn't, and you're not getting any more had you have done less, and yeah. that's the point. And yeah. I also would challenge them and say, "Okay, fine, you get really sore, and you're making progress." Try not getting so sore. Yeah, you're still going to make progress. And watch your progress accelerate. Yeah. You'll actually get better Even progress. better, yeah. That's right. Next question is from May Punk. Is it okay to skip trigger sessions if you are feeling sore or tired from a previous workout? That's actually the time you should do them. Oh, my Boom. gosh. Yeah, so, exactly. So if you don't know what a trigger session is, these are very short but very frequent uh, sessions that you do typically with bands where you're targeting specific muscles, getting a little bit of a pump, feeling a little bit of a burn, maybe eight minute long session, and then you stop. And you typically do these on your off days. Trigger sessions are phenomenal when you're sore or when you're tired. If anything, they, they, they speed up recovery. In fact, when I'm in a situation like Adam's describing where you said you, you worked out and you're super sore, you might have overdone it. One of the best things to do is to do some trigger sessions. Get your body to recover faster. It's one of the absolute best things you can do when you're feeling that way. And, you know, it's it's funny. We know this instinctually. Like, think of the last time your legs got really, really sore, and then you had to get up and maybe ride a bike or stretch a little bit. How do you feel right afterwards? Soreness dissipates a little bit. You feel a little bit better. I learned this lesson uh, the first time I figured this out a little bit was I was I was – I want to say I was 16 – and um, I was I had worked out my biceps really really hard, and I was super super sore in my biceps. This is before I, I understood you know overtraining really well, and I had just bought myself a BMX bike, and my cousin had gotten one too. So him and I would work out together. So the day before we hammered our biceps, the day after we're like, hey, let's take our bikes out and let's go practice bunny hopping over things. And you guys know bunny hopping, you have to pull up on the handlebars. As part of a bunny hop, especially when you don't know how to bunny hop, you pull way too hard as you learn, right? So I remember we went out and we were practicing and I'm pulling on this handlebar over and over again. And I remember thinking like, I just, I wasted my bicep workout. I shouldn't be doing this on my biceps. I should just let them rest. And I remember that the day after my soreness was gone and I actually felt like I'd built a little bit of muscle. I started to piece that together like, huh, it was the extra movement that got the recovery. You know, to well, the, I mean, I think this is when trigger sessions have the most value. Uh, I really do. I mean, it's not that they're, they're, they're great by themselves without uh, being sore, but I think the truth is when you're always trying to hit that sweet spot, you tend to be overreaching a little bit most of the time. And one of the, I think the, the, and we know this as trainers and coaches. And one of the things that I think has made the trigger sessions so beneficial is because it facilitates recovery and it speeds that process up. I mean, so Sunday I was supposed to go lift again and I was supposed to do squats and I was so damn sore that it, it, it impeded that. But instead what I ended up doing was mobility and triggers, did body weight squats. I want to get that blood and oxygen moving mm -hmm. through my body and pumping that through. That'll help facilitate recovery even faster. I feel better today because of that. Uh, but I think that's where I think trigger sessions, sometimes people... Uh, they they up uh, they go at it the same way. I think we a lot of them go at workouts. They they think you too need hard. To, yeah, yeah, too hard. It's literally you it's are not supposed to damage. You're just trying to pump blood in the muscle. Yeah. Take a pick the band that is not really hard for you to do. Fifteen to twenty reps. You should be able to easily do fifteen twenty reps. We're using biceps as an example. And Sal brought you just want to get a little bit of a pump. Yeah, that's it. Three sets of fifteen to twenty reps with an easy band, and then move to another muscle. Like that, that's it. I'm done. I'm done with my trigger. Yeah, the thing that you, that this might illustrate a little bit better, but I, I think we, we, we tend to confuse recovery and adaptation. We think they're the same thing. So when you, when you cause damage with a workout, your body recovers from the damage and then simultaneously often or sometimes afterwards, it also tries to adapt. So recovering would be like, I cut my hand and my skin heals. Yeah. Adaptation would be my skin grows a, a callus to prevent a cut from happening again in that same spot. So those can happen simultaneously. Now, if you if you train really, really hard or too hard and you're really sore, you're, your body's probably trying to adapt, but it's also trying to recover. And recovery tends to be the, the priority. Well, what ends up happening oftentimes is you worked out too hard. Recovery takes far longer than the adaptation. Adaptation happened, yeah. but now adaptation's there and your body doesn't keep 
the callus for very long. If there's not a good signal being sent, it'll it'll take it back down. So you might have gained a little bit, but then you lost because right. your body's just recovering. You could have had the next workout that just cut off that callus. Right. And so too much. So the trigger session causes no damage. What it does is it speeds up recovery, but it does send a small adaptation signal. Or if anything, it strengthens the adaptation signal that you sent before. This is why trigger sessions are so exceptional for exactly what this person is talking about. When you feel like you might have overdone it, do some light trigger sessions on that body part. Oh, and it, this has tons of value for someone who doesn't even have our program. So if you don't have any fucking clue what we're talking about right now with trigger sessions and it's how- It's in MAPS Anabolic. Yeah, right. It's in, it's in our program. But if you don't, it, like it, it, an easy way to explain it to somebody who's following something else or doing their own workouts, you know, you get, let's use keep using the bicep, we'll use bicep and legs, right? My legs sore, your bicep sore. You do some air squats, you know, for 20 reps, just body weight. And you do three sets of that for, you know, 15, 20 reps with like maybe 30 seconds in between. That'll pump my quads up. That's mm -hmm. all I, that's it. That's all I need to do. And do that like two or three times that day. Yeah, that's it. Two mm -hmm. or three times a day. That takes me a couple minutes to do the squats. And then I do some band, grab some bands and do 15 to 20 reps, three sets with 30 seconds rest in between, get a pump in my biceps, done with that. You do that a couple times a day on the muscle group that's really sore and watch how much faster you recover and you feel from that. Next question is from It's Not Easy Being Green. Just like there are benefits to switching up your workout routine, are there any benefits to switching up your diet? If so, what would that look like? How often would you change your diet and any pitfalls to avoid? I 100% be a selfie. I 100 <laughs> believe this. Not easy being green. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, no That's problem. my voice, isn't no it? No problem. Um, okay, so uh, I'll talk about the, the psychological benefits before we can get into the, 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 the physiological, potential physiological benefits. Psychologically, I think it's a brilliant thing to, to change up your diet. I think one of the biggest culprits or one of the, the biggest reasons why people have a tough time eating healthy or why people tend to binge um, is because they stay so rigid in one particular way of eating. For example, this is just an example, but let's say you're keto. So your keto diet means super, super low carbohydrates, high fat, uh, moderate to maybe higher protein. And that means I'm avoiding carbohydrates all the time. This person right here is primed for a binge. The second they go off, they go way the fuck off. They're just not used to eating different foods. Um, it doesn't mimic real life either. Real life, and, and humans probably evolved eating a lot of the same foods, but yeah. it was a seasonal change, right? Mm -hmm. It was like winter time, you're probably only eating meat, you know, spring, things are growing, maybe I'm eating more plants, summer, you know, and so the foods would change as the seasons would change. So humans, I think we just operate better with a little bit more variety than the rigid, like I eat, these are my macros, this is what I eat all the time. You see this with bodybuilders, bodybuilders eat the same foods every single day I, and it, just notorious. I, I think that I think there's no doubt the psychological argument is not only there, but it's extremely strong. I think the real question for me that I have is, is the physiological uh, as strong as the psychological in this situation? And I believe there's a lot of unknowns in this area still. Like we, we, we are still learning so much about the gut. And it just makes total sense to me when we talk about every other system of the body. Why would we not think that our digestive system adapts similarly? Why would we not think that? Right. Every other system has an adaptation process and gets used to whatever it is that you're throwing at it on a consistent basis. So if you eat the same way, you hit the same amount of grams of carbs, proteins, and fats on a very regular basis because you're following the same dry plan all the time, why would you not think that our body would become adapted to that? Yeah. And if we're trying to create change, it makes a lot of sense to me. I, this is why I love... To, to mess around with all this. When I teach clients, I used to, they would all, every client always ask, oh, have you heard about the ketogenic diet? Oh, have you heard about this? Have you heard about that? Absolutely. We're going to go through it all. Like I want to teach my clients all of it. And, the, and then as we're going through it, talk about the benefits, what they're feeling, whether it's pro or con. This is why you're mm -hmm. feeling that way because you're eating this way. And to like teach them how to take all the tools from all of these different diets. Because the reason why all of them are successful is because they're lower calorie. I mean, mm -hmm. bottom line, like the real science that supports why any of the diets are really, really successful is because they're all designed to restrict calories. We restrict calories, we lose body fat. So then it's really just about starting to look at all the other signals that when you eat this way, how do you feel? Like, does it, do you sleep better? You have better in, uh, energy? Are you sharper? Okay, so you like those benefits. Oh, but you start to notice that on Saturdays, 
I like this type of diet. For example, for me, I like to run a, on a weekend. I like to run a higher fat, lower carb because I tend to be lazier. I tend to watch more TV or be sitting around or sleeping in. And what I have found from doing ketogenic or running a high fat diet is, I wow, it just curbs my appetite. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can eat a really high fat breakfast and then I'll, I'm good all day till dinner time. Mm -hmm. And I'll do that on, on a Saturday. I'm not running a specific diet. I've just learned from running so many different diets how that works really well for my lifestyle there. When I have a hard workout, I want to carb up. Like So I think there's a lot of value in people going through all these different types of diets, but not stopping there yeah. and not attaching it just to their muscle building or weight loss journey. There's many other things that food provides for us and really learning to unpack what you're enjoying, what you like, what benefits that you see from it. And it's okay. Uh, muscle building and fat loss can be one of those, but they're not the only ones. And so make the connection to all of those and then learn how to implement all of those different aspects. I'm sure at some point, yeah, we're going to find like there's a lot of parallels between exercise and, you know, nutrition. And it's just nutrition. It, it's so complex because, you know, there's other things going on, like autoimmune things, things that are, you know, underneath the surface that we're just now like discovering of how to treat. And I think that, you know, that sort of that puts a whole nother host of uh, of variables about what specifically will match you for the moment. And then how long do I stay in that protocol? You know, what's the time length of that? There's not enough science, I think. And so we're, we're really relying on anecdotal, uh, you know, uh, like, like evidence or, or yeah, evidence. Anecdotal evidence. Yeah, absolutely. And okay. So that's a hundred percent true. A lot of it's going to be listening to your body. You're not going to know what affects your body until, or how it, something affects your body until you kind of go through it. Once you start to figure it out, like I know, for example, for myself, I know when to change my diet depending on what I'm looking to do. If I'm looking for me personally to be sharp mentally, I tend to go much lower carbohydrate, higher fat. If I'm looking for strength and performance in the gym, I'll eat more carbohydrates. I know how I feel when it's time to eat more fish. I know how I feel when it's time to eat more beef or more greens. Um, and also look at the nutrient profiles of these foods. You know, uh, like if I say right now, omega three fatty acids, we all think fish because fish is a rich source. Certain types of fish are a rich source of uh, omega three fatty acids. If I say creatine, natural creatine uh, in food, or if I say uh, lots of B vitamins, you know, we might think red meat, for example. If I say lots of fiber, then you might be thinking more plant uh, based foods because animal based foods typically don't contain any fiber. So there's lots of different nutrients and components into all of these foods. And I think that they'll all benefit you. The odds that you'll have a nutrient deficiency start to go up when your diet becomes more and more the same all the time. Because if you look at a diet, for example, that's, you know, uh, just keto or just paleo or just vegan, you'll find that they have a tendency to lack certain nutrients depending on the variety of the food in there. But if you mix it up a little bit, the odds are that you're going to cover um, all of your bases. This is why you see people who will follow a diet and they'll feel great for two or three years and then they start to feel like shit and then realize, oh, I have nutrient deficiencies because I ate only this for so long and I lack these nutrients that were found in other foods that I didn't eat before. Um, now, from an evolutionary standpoint, humans are were opportunistic 100%. If there was something there that we could eat, we ate it. Um, we didn't understand agriculture until far later, so we weren't planting things. So we either killed things, pulled them out of the ocean, ate bugs, and ate the plants that grew around us. That meant, and we moved, right? We were, we were hunter-gatherers. We literally moved and traveled. This is why humans are all over the earth. We traveled all over the world trying to find things to eat, which meant our diets consistently and constantly changed depending on the season, were we near an ocean or a lake? Are we inland? Are we in the mountains? Are we more cl closer to a desert? So the human body seems to do well with a certain type of variety. Now, the other part of the question is how often would you change your diet? I don't have any science that, su that, that supports any particular time frame. This is my own personal opinion, and it's a, it's a bit of a guess, but I'm basing it off of just you know how we probably evolved. And I would say evolve your diet or change your diet seasonally would probably be best. Um, how? What does that look like? Okay, uh, eat the fruits and vegetables that tend to be in season for the area that you live in. 
Uh, so you have your summer veg- your summer fruits and vegetables, and your spring and winter fruits and vegetables. Meats uh, tend to you know eat meat throughout the whole year, but I do like to eat more fish in the summer. And I just picture and this is again this is there's no studies to support this, but I think to myself like oh I would probably fish more likely to fish when it's not freezing you know outside or whatever. So um, that's how soon and often I would say to change, but definitely well I like value. I like the idea mm-hmm. of you know every two to three months uh, less I don't I don't I don't try as hard to match seasons. I mean we we live in a, a really nice time now where. You know, strawberries are in season twelve yeah. months out of the year. Right? Yeah, oranges year round. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, uh, I, 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 although that's probably not how we originally evolved, uh, we have that access. So, I just like to to throw a curveball uh, at my body every probably three months or so and switch it up. And so, and we used to share probably on the podcast a lot more. I, I think we we try and we should try and be better about just kind of sharing what we're doing now because I know I know these guys. I'm meeting with them all the time. So. You know, I know Sal. Are you off keto? Or are you do, are you are you still running keto? Um, I I went off for a few days. Now I'm going to go back on. So, right, but so, I do that. Right, exactly. So and you'll hear that all you know all of a sudden you know one I have guy tacos. one guy will be <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fasting, That'll one guy will be running keto or paleo, or one guy will be doing high carb or so or carb cycling. Like so, we're always kind of intermittently changing. Uh, but that's the message that I think we've been trying to get across in this podcast since the beginning is that we we don't uh, subscribe to. Uh, one single diet whatsoever. I think that's silly. I think that's also I th- one of the challenges with this, uh, with the show and programs and everything like that is people always want us to tell them yeah, what to one do. definitive way. Yeah, they want us to tell us tell them how to eat. And the reason why we've avoided that for so long is because it is so in- individualized, and we do recommend that you do all these different ways of eating to figure yourself out. And to do that for one person, the amount of time that would consume for me to do that is unreal. So you got it gotta, takes a long time and a lot of information just to do it help one person one person you know let alone you know a whole audience of people you know it's like when you work with people for you know 10 plus years on a consistent basis you work with hundreds of them or you work through maybe thousands by proxy let's say you have people who work with other people and you manage them one thing becomes very very clear after about 10 years and it's just in your face you can't deny it there's a massive individual variant. Yeah, and you've seen every rule broken. I I've seen right? them all. I, I I mean I remember years ago thinking I was so anti-vegan. I thought nobody could ever do well vegan, and then I had a client that legit just was the healthiest and did best vegan. I've met people on the opposite end of the scale who just do best eating carnivore, which is insane. All they eat is meat. That sounds crazy. Nope, I've legit met people yeah. who do best that way, and so I know those are the two extremes. Most people are somewhere in the middle. I've also seen people do really well one way, and then three years later, doesn't work well for them. Right. We got to change it because circumstances change, the body changes. So, the individual variants cannot be overstated, and that I think is one of the main benefits of cycling through different ways of eating. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides, resources, and books. They're all totally free. You can also find us all on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.